Now let's explore how to solve number 24 on the AMZ 12B, which really is not really that hard for number 24. So we are given the value of A, B, C, D. Of course, they're positive integers. And we're also given the LCM of A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, and C, D. And we're asked to find what is G, C, D, A, B, C, D. So the idea in these kind of problems is we always want to look at each prime individually. So starting off with two. LCM AB is two cubed. So if you look at the A, B, and C, right? Let's say two to the X or D. Two to the X, let's say two to the Y, two to the Z, and let's say two to the W, right? So LCM would just take the maximum exponent. So LCM AB, maximum of X and Y must be three. Similarly, AC, maximum of X and Z must be three. X and W, maximum must be three. So from here, we can deduce x must be 3. Now, why is that the case? What if y, what, what if y is 3, z is 3, and w is 3? Because if, let's say x was not 3, right? Then, in order for this to, LCM to be 2 cubed, this must have a factor of 3, this must have a factor of 3, and this must have a factor of 3. But then GCD of b and c would then also have a factor of 3, but it doesn't. So therefore, that's why this must be 3, or uh, must be exactly 3. Okay, so A is exactly 3. Now, now we take a look at these values, right? We already saw, we explained why these happen. BD is 2 squared, CD is 2 squared, BC is 2 to the 1. Hmm. So, again, we can see here, we must have D, must have a factor of 2 squared. This must be 2. Why? Because if D is not 2, then B and C have both have a prime factor of, both have 2 squared prime factors in them. But that means that G, their LCM would also have a 2 squared prime factor, which isn't true. Okay, and finally, LCM B, C, so now we've explained these two values and these three values. Finally, LCM B, C is 1, 2 to the 1. They, therefore, at least one of these must have a 2 to the power. Of. So, this, this, at least one of them, B or C, we don't know which one, has to be 2 to the 1. But the question is, is C also going to have a factor of 2? That's where we come back to this condition. 2 to the 6 is the product. So 3, 1, 2. Aha, we already have 6. So if this was instead 2 to the 7, then we would know this has to be 1. Because then the sum is 7. But it's 6, so we know this is 0. But then what's GCD, A, B, C, D? At least for the prime factor 2? That's one. So GCD, A, B, C, D is not going to have a factor of two. We can automatically cross out these choices. Now we look at the factor of three. It's a very similar analysis we're going to do. Exact same pretty much. So I'll go through this, this time a little bit faster because it's literally the exact same idea. So A, B, three squared. So A, B, three squared, A, T, C, three cubed, three cubed. So where is this three cubed coming from? So we definitely must have, or you know what, now that I think about it, five is probably easier to look at because five, you de definitively have a maximum value, right? Five is very similar to two. LCM AB is five cubed, AC five cubed, AD five cubed. So either A has a factor of five cubed or B, C, and D all have factors of five cubed. But if B, C, and D all have a factor of five cubed, then... B and this thing, you will have a factor of 5 cubed, which it isn't. So therefore, A must have a factor of 5 cubed in it. So this must be 3. Now B. So now we've taken care of these cases. Now we have B, these two cases left. B, C, B, D, C, D. So as you can see here, they're all equal to 5 squared. What does that mean? Well, that means if you kind of draw a Venn diagram, the maximum of any two is 5 squared, which means that at least two of them have to be 5 squared. It could be three of them, but at least two, because if you just have one of them as five squared, like let's say just B, now C and D are left with no five squared in them. No, no, none of them have five squared. So at least two of them must have five squared, and the other one can be question mark. And this is where we go back to our product, right? Five to the seven. Aha, we know this has to be zero, because otherwise the sum of these exponents won't be seven. But then we look, huh, is there, is there a prime factor of 5 common? No. So we can eliminate 3, or sorry, you can eliminate 45 and 15. Can we just get 3 as our answer right away? But just to double check, 
let's just verify that we indeed, de we indeed do need a factor of three in our prime factorization. I mean, of course, if you're in the contest, you wouldn't do this, but just for a better understanding of the problem. So A, B, A, B, A, C, A, D. We have three squared, three. Hmm, it seems like A, B is the only one that has three squared in it. So therefore, A and B, everything else besides A and B, so C and D must have a five cubed in them. Or three cubed in them, sorry. This, this has to be three and this has to be three. Why? Because A and B clearly, none of these have a factor of three cubed in them. So C and D must, because like LCM AC is three cubed, and we already know A does not have a factor of three cubed, so C must. Similarly, LCM AD is three cubed, and we know A doesn't have a factor of three cubed from this, so D must. And then we go back to this condition, AB three squared. So one of these has to be two. And then, huh, what do we know about the last one? The product is 3 to the 9. So it could be anything really, but we know this is 3 to the 9, so it has to be 1. And of course, it's symmetric. We could have had this being 1 and 2 as well, because A and B are symmetric. So therefore, we see, yes, indeed, these all share GCD of 3. So 3 is our answer. The key trick here was just looking at each prime factor one at a time and realizing what the maximum LCM is really just maximum exponent. And then we just kind of use some logical deduction for each exponent, very similar logic and use a product at the end to decide, you know, the last value, whether it needs to have a factor of that prime or not. Thanks for watching.